All right, welcome everybody. It looks like we're live. Um, it's been a little while since I've done this, so make sure that you let me know if the uh, camera's coming through okay and that the audio is coming through okay. I just want to make sure that the um, sound that you're hearing and everything looks all good. Um, so what you should be able to see pretty soon here is um, a view of a lionfish that I'm painting pretty soon here. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of work in watercolor and a little bit in acrylic as well as a little bit of ink work tonight. Um, awesome. Kathleen says we're coming through okay. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know. So um, as you can see, I've already done a little bit of work on this lionfish. So done a little bit of watercolor in the background, just kind of laying in some of the base tones. And then also I've obviously penciled and inked a little bit of this lionfish as well. And basically the reason for that is just I want to make sure that I can finish for you guys. Um, it seems like I've uh, struggled to do that in the past, so I wanted to make sure that I could uh, get things done. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, over here I have a little set of pans of watercolor. I'm going to go in and just kind of lay in a very thin layer of yellowish orange along the whole body of the fish. And I'm just basically hoping that this will give me a nice base coat and a base color for the entire fish so that we don't have anything that uh, has like a spot of white showing through or anything like that. Um, I picked a lionfish mostly because of uh, Star Trek, actually. I'm a big fan of Star Trek The Next Generation, and Captain Picard in that show has a lionfish named Livingston, who's in his ready room, uh, just kind of chilling in a tank in the back there. And I just thought it would be kind of a fun subject to paint. Lionfish are kind of ugly in a beautiful sort of way, I guess. Or... Yeah, maybe the other way around, I don't know. They have a very unique appearance, so they've got these sort of like transparent fins on the back that are really cool. Um, I just thought that it would make for kind of a, a fun topic for me to paint. I don't paint many animals, truth be told, so you're kind of seeing uh, me as I go and kind of going by the seat of my pants in some of these spots, which is all right. Makes it kind of fun. If you're just joining the stream, definitely make sure to uh, leave a comment or a question if you'd like. I'll do my best to kind of peek over here every now and then and answer those. I am going to try to go a little bit faster than I have in the past on some of my previous streams because I know that I haven't finished them, <laughs> which is kind of a bummer from my perspective, just because I want to make sure that uh, you guys can see the whole thing and watch it as it goes. I tried doing this on a Friday night. I don't know if that's uh, good or bad for people, but I figured it might be kind of a fun way to unwind after a work week. It's nice for me to be able to do it as well, just to kind of sit back and relax and do a little bit of painting. <laughs> Kathleen's asking how the weather up in Minnesota is. Uh, it is... Actually, not too bad today. Uh, we got about four or five inches of snow yesterday. Was it the day before? I don't remember. So that was uh, not so fun to shovel that. But uh, overall, it's been, you know, temperature right around the freezing point, which is actually kind of unseasonably warm, honestly. So I guess I'll take it at that. But yeah, it's been good. Overall, it hasn't been too bad. I feel like this has been a relatively mild winter. We had a little bit of, uh, right around Christmas, it was really super cold. There were a couple days where the highs were below zero, which was no fun at all. But overall, it hasn't been too bad. Just going to finish up getting in these little spines. Lionfish are actually kind of cool because they have these spines that stick out, which is where the pieces of the fin kind of go in between, the little transparent uh, pieces of the fin. And those spines are actually venomous. So they actually have like venom sacs that kind of squirt venom up those spines. I was doing a little bit of like research on how to paint um, a lionfish like this, just kind of looking at what they looked like and everything. and. You go down the YouTube rabbit hole and all of a sudden you're uh, looking at a video, or at least I end up looking at a video of um, 
how to fillet a lionfish. Apparently they taste good if you prepare them correctly. You just have to make sure that you don't get into any of the venom sacks or anything. But if anybody has a lionfish, I could probably fillet one very poorly at this point. All right. So I've got my base coat of yellow down there. We'll see how that kind of dries because it's all watercolor, so it's very watery at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in on this area, this kind of like dirt, gravelly sort of um, ground area. And I'm going to go in and paint that sort of a gray color, but I'm going to mix in a little bit of a bluish green with that gray so that it's not just pure gray, but that you have some of this appearance of sort of looking like it's underwater. So off on the side here, you probably can't see my little palette. Um, I just have a little piece of wax paper on top of a, um, what is this? This is like a little hobby cutting board type thing. And I found that using the palette made of wax paper, it just makes it a lot easier for me. It's disposable. When I'm done, I can just sort of crumple it up and throw it away. Especially when you're using acrylics, I find that there's like a little bit of... Uh, sticky residue that kind of, as the acrylic dries, obviously the acrylic is acrylic, it's plastic. So as you're drying, it kind of gets a little funky and weird on you. And I just uh, get a little nervous when I send that stuff down the pipes. <laughs> Things are going to get clogged up. So, I don't know. I feel a little bit more comfortable just crumpling this up and throwing it in the garbage can. All right, so I've got my little bit of gray mixed in. And I'm going to go in and just start laying in some of these basic rock formations and everything. You might notice I'm not working on a canvas here. I'm actually working on a watercolor book. So this is something that I bought at Hobby Lobby recently. Um, it's just their brand. I think it's Master's Touch, I think, is their brand. And it's, it's just a booklet filled with watercolor paper. So... The paper itself is a little bit thicker, and I've done acrylic on it. I've done some markers and ink work. I've done watercolor, as the name would suggest. Um, and it, I've been pretty happy with it, honestly. It wasn't a very expensive book. I think it's got 48 sheets in it, if I'm not mistaken. And it's accepted pretty much everything that I've thrown at it pretty well. So overall, I've been pretty pleased with it. It's nice enough that um, you can paint well with it and you don't have to worry about um, just, you know, things being low quality or the paper degrading. But it's not so nice that you worry about ruining it with your artwork, <laughs> which is kind of a struggle that I have at some points. You know, when you buy this really nice sketchbook and you're afraid that like, oh shoot, I'm going to put my artwork in here and mess it up. You know, it's, it's nice enough that uh, it's good quality paper and everything, but it's not so nice that I worry about that. I think that's a very real fear that artists have sometimes. That's certainly one that I understand, too. I'm going to mix in a little bit of white um, so that I can do some of these more foreground areas up here. So as I work further away, I'm going to get darker and darker because... It's kind of the opposite of being above the water. As you're, when you're looking through the air, the air is kind of making things look a little bit lighter and slightly more blue as you get further away from the camera. The opposite is kind of going to be true underwater. Um, things are going to get darker, darker shades of blue as you go further away from the camera. You're just looking through more and more of the water, which is kind of obscuring and uh, making things a little bit darker as you go further back. I'm going to leave this foreground rock over here in the corner. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more specialized work in that area. It's kind of an interesting um, difference working in watercolor versus acrylic. You see, as I painted over these inked lines in watercolor, you can really see the black very clearly through it. That's because watercolor is a very transparent medium, um, which is, you know, has its benefits and its drawbacks. Acrylic is a much thicker, more opaque medium, though. So as I'm going over this, you can still see those black lines in spots, but it's definitely much darker. Um, 
and covers up that uh, ink line that I made before much more uh, fully. So what I'll probably do in this area is the spots that I want to have black inked lines, um, I will actually go over those with ink again after this is entirely done and dry. I actually received a uh, fountain pen for Christmas from my parents, which I've been using to ink some things like this. I got some um, platinum carbon ink as well, which was a nice little pickup in terms of the art supply. It's a really black ink. Uh, it's made from a Japanese company. It's really high quality. Um, I like it a lot. And um, it's the first time I've used it recently, but it's been really good. An artist named Peter Hahn, who runs a YouTube channel that's awesome, um, recommended that for fountain pens. It's very dark, very black. Um, it's waterproof, which a lot of inks are not, actually. So even after they're dry, you, if you try to apply watercolor over the top of them, your ink will kind of smudge and smear on you if you're not careful. But this Platinum Carbon ink is waterproof, which is great for doing um, projects like this. It's also specifically made for fountain pens. So a mistake that I used to make, um, I would get a fountain pen or something like that, and then I would try to put India ink in it, which is a disaster, uh, because India ink isn't really meant for um, fountain pens. It's got too much solid particulate and pigment in it. So what ended up happening is it just immediately clogged the pen and then you either had to flush it out or the uh, pen was basically useless. <laughs> it basically clogged on you immediately. So I'm pretty pleased with this for this foreground dusty, dirty area. I'm going to do a little bit more just sort of general adding of some tones and some shading in here. I've got my light source kind of coming in from this direction. Uh, when you're underwater, the most likely light source is going to be from above because that's where the sun is when you're underwater. Um, that's just how physics works. So uh, I'm thinking that what's going to end up happening is on this side of the fish, this kind of interior side, sort of at the bottom, that's going to be my darkest area. And then over here, kind of on the top and maybe pulling around this side is going to be sort of the brightest area where you see some of that reflected light from the sunlight above. Um, so I think that's kind of going to be how I'm going to approach that. And we'll see how it goes. Let's paint a little bit of shadow on this little rock face. Maybe a little bit over here as well. And we'll get a little bit over here. That's just generally roughing in some little shadow shapes that will kind of serve to define where the different faces of the rock are. All right. And now I'm going to come over here and do this little rock in the foreground as well. And this is a little bit closer to the camera, so I want the colors here to be a little bit more vibrant. I want the rock to be a little bit more well-defined. So I kind of went in with a little bit more of the colored paint so that this would be a little bit punchier. All right, what do we want to do next? I'm thinking that these are going to kind of be like coral reef looking things over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and paint these sort of like a pinkish color. Maybe like a pinkish orange, get a little bit of yellow in there as well. I apologize if you see me leaning a little bit. Um, Next time, I'll put a little bit more thought into the actual setup for cameras and where the palette should go and everything. I've been uh, working in the new year, and I want to make this stream a more regular thing, first off. I want to do at least once a month, probably, is kind of what I'm going to shoot for. Um, 
And then I also want to just improve the quality of the stream as well. I don't know if you can tell or if it really makes that big of a difference, but this camera here that's pointing at me, uh, that used to just be the webcam that came with my kind of cheapo laptop. Uh, but I bought a slightly better one and upgraded it a little bit. So I hope that that kind of comes across and that there's a little bit of an increase in video quality on that one. So I, I do want to make this a little bit more of an intentional thing that I do. Instead of being more haphazard, really kind of spend some time on making things the way that I'd like them to be, making them nice and everything. One of my New Year's, New Year's resolutions, I guess. Now I'll come in here and do another one of these. And this is just kind of laying down some base colors so that this is so that I have something to work off of here and I can add shadows and highlights um, sort of as we go along. I'm pretty happy with the way this color is turning out actually. There's a couple little spots that you can see I, where I missed the um, colored over the lines. Still having that problem ever since kindergarten, I guess. But that's okay, we can work along that, work around it. I don't know if you can see super well, but this paper is actually not really even buckling that much, even though it's unsupported. It's just a page in a book here. Um, and I'm kind of throwing some pretty heavy mediums at it, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Like I said, I, I do like this um, paper in this book. Hobby Lobby, I guess they make good stuff. Let me mix up a little bit of green. And what I'm going to do is hop back over to this side of the painting. And I'm going to do a little bit of work on these little like stalks of seaweed, maybe. So what I've got uh, is a greenish color. I just threw a little bit of black into it to kind of darken it up. Maybe I'll put a little bit more yellow in it to kind of brighten it up again. And this is basically going to be a shadow color for those. I filled this in with watercolor off stream um, before you guys join me here. So I'll just kind of give this a little bit of brush action to throw in some shadow shapes as we go. Just like that. And I'm going to get my brush nice and wet. And while this paint is still wet, I've got a wet brush. So I'm going to try to kind of diffuse that out a little bit, move that color around, kind of soften some of those edges so that it doesn't look like there's just one single painted line that's going up. These stalks kind of spread it around, give it a little bit more of a diffused look. Because after all, this stuff isn't supposed to be the focal point of the painting, so I'm going to try to avoid having hard edges on this section of the painting and try to soften these, like I said. One of the fun things that's working, that there is with working with wet media like this, and you start adding a lot of water into your paint and everything, is that the paper starts to kind of soak in some of the paint and you start to get sort of like bloom effects in places and the paint kind of spreads out in an unpredictable and kind of organic looking way. So that's really fun. I, I like the way that that comes out. All right. Now, I think what it's time to do is time to go in and do some work on this fish itself. So lionfish are kind of like a reddish brown color in a lot of spots. Like I said, they're kind of, kind of ugly, but kind of pretty as well in a certain way. So over on the palette here, I'm just mixing up a little bit of red and a little bit of brown to kind of give me what I think is kind of a good base color. And I have to remember that there's a yellow kind of underpainting here. So whatever I paint on top of this is going to take on a little bit of that yellow. A little bit of that yellow will show through. 
So what I will do is I'm going to come in. I'm left-handed, so this is a disaster waiting to happen, but that's all right. Let's go in. And I'm going to leave these thin stripes that I drew. Those are going to be the little white stripes that you see on the lionfish. And as I go up the fish, the paintbrush is naturally running out of paint. So the color is slightly getting a little bit more bright as I go up. And that's kind of what I want. I want more of that yellow to show through, less of this darker reddish brown color. Because like I said, that's where the light is going to come from. And once this is all said and done, I'm going to go back over this with some, um, a white ink pen and then also some more of that black ink to kind of firm up some of these lines that are getting a little bit covered up by the paint that I'm applying. Go up there like that. Grab a little bit more paint. One area that I actually wasn't super pleased with in my drawing was this head. I felt like it needs to be a little bit more smooshed up at the eyes as I was looking at um, pictures of lionfish. Their heads are a little bit more triangular shaped. So this almost looks more like an amphibian of some type. So that was a spot where I think I whiffed on this one, but that's okay. So for anybody who's just joining the stream, I'm just painting this lionfish here um, using acrylic right now, but there's a lot of watercolor in the background. And we're just going in with some little shades of brown and red. And I'm going to go in and kind of pull up a little bit more of a reddish color in some of these spots as we come up towards the top and wrap around the back of the fish. And then as you go down these spines, they still continue having these little stripe effects, but they go along the, um, the spines of the fish. So I'll paint those going that way. Trying to stay loose here too, to kind of, everything about a lionfish is very kind of loose and flowy. So I kind of want to emulate that in how I'm painting. I don't want to get too stiff. I want things to have a certain amount of flow and energy to them. And I'm going to paint those same bands just on every one of these little spines. Grab a little bit more paint and go along these. Just like that. In terms of uh, side projects for art that I've been working on, I got a little goodie bag from a website called Lulu, which is a self-publishing company. Uh, it came yesterday, actually. So I'm a contributor to a project called the 9-Volt Anthology. And basically what that is, is I'm, I belong to a Discord server that's full of people who enjoy making comic books. So it's, it's all about people that are interested in making comics themselves, interested in the art, interested in the writing, production process and everything. And that group, usually maybe twice a year, will put out a call for submissions for the 9-Volt Anthology. 
which is just an anthology of comics um, made by members of the Discord. So um, usually there's a theme. So whatever story you're going to submit for the 9-volt anthology has to fit within that theme. And um, yeah, basically it's just a bunch of creator-owned comics that uh, people have created and have put forward for publication in there. So I've submitted to, I think, three at this point. Um, I've been telling the same story, actually, in all three. It's kind of like a continuation on each one um, of the same story. But I just got mine for the Monsters Anthology, which just came out uh, earlier, I think right at the turn of the year, actually. So right as 2023 started, um, the newest anthology piece came out. So yeah. I can share those over here too really quick, just show you what came. So I submitted to 9 Volt Monsters, which is this guy here. Uh, it's, I think, like 125 pages or something like that. There's quite a bit. I submitted nine, um, so that was pretty cool. There was a 9 Volt Mausoleum of Horror, which was a Halloween special that we did. Um, was it 2021 or 2022? I don't remember. And then there's also Uncanny Journeys, which was another one. Um, so these are all pretty cool projects. Like I said, I submitted a nine volt or a nine page story to the nine volt anthology for the monsters uh, one. So kind of details the story of some of the characters that I've made doing some uh, sci-fi things. So I thought it was pretty cool. I enjoyed doing that very much. It's a fun little side project to make those. I really enjoy comics. I like them as a medium. I think that they really do have... Uh, it's a unique medium. There's a lot that you can do with it, I think. So I enjoy... It combines a lot of things that I enjoy, I guess, is the main thing for me. I enjoy writing, um, telling stories and things like that. I enjoy... Um, drawing and comic book style artwork. I enjoy the history of the medium, too. I think that comic book history is just really interesting. I think that it's cool because it's like halfway in between a movie and a novel, and that like the bulk of the information that you're conveying is all visual, but there's also a little bit of um, text that you can put in there. So you can have a little bit more exposition where you have characters that are explaining their thoughts and their motivations and stuff like that. I think that that's really cool. And I don't think that you really get that super well in a movie. I think when you have a movie where there's a lot of people's interior monologue and thoughts, it just kind of comes across being sort of wonky and weird. I just not really a big fan of most way, the way that I've seen that done in most movies. And I think that in comics, you really get that in a way that you can't in any other medium. In a way where the information is still communicated visually um, very well, I think. I'm going to darken up a little bit of this face. So I'm going to come in with a little bit more of the brownish red paint. And you can see as I paint this area especially, um, because it's still wet and I'm applying wet paint to it, that wet paint is kind of spreading out and blooming in a lot of those spots in a way that I think is, is interesting. It keeps you on your toes. It keeps the painting itself feeling alive and interesting. Let me pull this brown color so that there's a little bit more of a gradation, so that it's not yellowish red, then just brown immediately. Paint in a couple of these spots. Overall, I'm actually pretty pleased with how this is turning out. Like I said, there's a lot of uh, experimentation that I'm doing here, and kind of filling in details as I go, so I'm pretty pleased with how 
things are shaping up and how I'm seeing things here. What I'm going to do now is add in a little bit more shading inside of this coral reef area and a little bit more inside of this dirt, rocky, gravelly area. Other fun news, um, you can see probably in the bottom left corner, it looks like, I have that link there to my coffee page, which is a spot where um, I just have a lot of different things. There's some stuff for sale that's on there. There's a little digital tip jar if you wanted to support me in that way, that's there. Um, but there's also a spot for commissions. And the fun news that I was going to tell is uh, I'm working on a commission now actively. Uh, some old friend of mine uh, reached out about commissioning a series of artwork for what's called the Stations of Light, which, um, so in the Catholic Church, there's this devotion called the Stations of the Cross that deals with kind of all of the uh, events of Christ's passion, uh, the death and crucifixion of Jesus. There's also this devotion called the Stations of Light, which is newer. I didn't actually really know about it until this person requested the artwork, but it deals with events after the resurrection. So it's a series of devotions and prayers about certain biblical stories after the resurrection occurs. So I've been working on a couple of pieces of artwork for that. So there's 14 stations, so I'll be doing 14 pieces of artwork for that. Um, it's a unique project. Um, I've always wanted to do more uh, religious themed artwork because it's a big part of my life and I just didn't for whatever reason for a long time. So it's fun to be working on a commission for that. It's going to take me a little while to get through that just because like I said there are 14 of them. So I mean it's a pretty extensive project overall. But I'm really looking forward to it. I think it provides a lot of unique challenges. Um, this is going to be a private piece of artwork, so it's going to be hanging on somebody's wall, basically. Um, so I think that the, the work itself, so each individual painting, each individual station has its own composition that I'll be painting, but then the whole thing as a whole will have its own composition as well. All of those pieces that when they hang together on the wall, need to kind of tie in and have a cohesive look and design element to them. And I think that that's, it's been an interesting challenge for me to think about uh, from a design perspective and also from like a, a devotional and prayer perspective of kind of like, if I'm going to use this to pray and meditate on these things, what would I want these things to look like? How would I want them to go? You know, what would help me in that? It's like I said, it's a very interesting and uh, unexpected, I guess, kind of challenge, but it's been good. It's helping me to grow as an artist, helping me to grow a little bit in prayer as I think about these things as well. It's, a, it's been a cool commission. So I'll be posting some more of those on my social media pages as we go along um, and as I have more to share, because at this point, it's a lot of uh, planning right at the moment. So I don't have a whole lot to share at this point that really looks uh, interesting or fun or finished, but that's all right. So I'm going to go in and kind of grade out some of these little pieces of paint that I just put down. And I see a spot actually where I... Uh, Missed some of the stripes on these spines. That's okay though. Do, 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 do. All right. And right now it looks very yellowy. And the um, the yellow watercolor paint that I put down is actually a little bit more saturated than I intended. So that's kind of on me on that. But what I'm going to do is take uh, this white gel pen and go over those white 
those yellow spots rather, excuse me, so that they become a little bit more white. They're not quite so uh, yellowy just because it doesn't quite look right with how a lionfish really looks. But before I do that, I'll put in a little bit of texture on these rocks and gravelly areas with a little bit of darker paint. Just like that. Just give these a little bit of visual interest because this rock over here is further in the foreground um, i need the contrast so the difference between the light and dark on that rock to be a little bit more um, punchy so i'm going to go in and grab some darker paint and this might be glaring for you it's glaring for me actually right now i've got a light uh, over there that's kind of given me some pretty harsh reflection, so I apologize if that's coming across um, on the video. Like I said, I will work on the setup because insensibly I am left-handed and I put the palette right underneath where my left arm would rest here as I'm painting. So you live and you learn, for sure. But I'm glad you're here with me, learning with me. Appreciate you taking some time out of your Friday evening to just have a little bit of fun and paint a little bit. The other fun thing that I've been doing is, uh, so the library here has a pretty large comic section, um, but the some of the comics that I've been looking forward to read and kind of catch up on, they're not there. So I've been borrowing them through the interlibrary learn, loan. So uh, taking, getting comics in from all over the place to kind of fuel my <laughs> addiction. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but it's been kind of fun to uh, get in a couple different things. I've been working through and recently finished reading um, Akira Toriyama's Manga Theater, which Akira Toriyama is the creator of Dragon Ball. So that deals with um, his earlier like comic book style works that he had made. And it's interesting. It's got some of his works from different periods of his creative career. This actually isn't sticking, uh, this white gel pen. So I'm going to switch over and probably just carefully use a little bit of white paint here. So it has different things from different times in his career. It's interesting too, because I think one of the works that's in there is the first work that he ever got published in a magazine. And it's just super interesting to see this very famous, very well-known, uh, very prolific creator kind of in the fledgling steps as he's trying to figure things out and he's experimenting and you know his skill set and toolbox are kind of limited at the beginning. His budget is limited at the beginning. So he's, you know, not using all of the techniques that were available to him or were common for manga artists at the time. So it's just, it's very interesting to do that. And there's a little bit of commentary in the book as well of kind of like his retrospective on some of those things. I just think that stuff is really cool. It's interesting when artists walk through their thought processes or their creative processes and you get to see... You know, I'm a sucker for like people's studio visits um, or not studio visits, studio uh, walkthroughs that people will do just to kind of see how other people work and how they do things. It's just really interesting to me. Like I said, right now I'm just kind of going over these little spots that were a little bit too yellow for my taste and going in with a little, just a tiny little bit of thin white paint to uh, push the colors so that they're kind of a little bit more correct for what I was imagining. And for what a lionfish actually looks like, because that's important too.
And on these spines where there's the change, uh, and you have these bands of red and um, brownish red and then the white, I'll go through and I'll probably ink the separations there. Um, just because I think that little bit of a hard line will kind of help help sell the illusion a little bit better. Let me know if you guys like these being done on Fridays. I've been kind of experimenting with different days and seeing what uh, what I think is best, but if you guys like this, definitely let me know. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, um, one of the things that I'm going to be doing in the new year with the whole new setup and everything um, is I actually have, you probably can't see it, it's probably out of frame, but I have a camera up top over the webcam that's shooting this right now so that you can see. Um, I have that recording a time-lapse video of what I'm doing. So I know some people can't, or I mean, I totally understand if people wouldn't want to, to sit here for 35 minutes or 40 minutes with me, just listening to me blather on about lionfish and Star Trek and everything. So I, I will be recording time lapses of these and then uploading those to the YouTube channel as well uh, for people who might be interested in seeing what I'm doing, but don't have the patience to deal with me for 45 minutes, which, like I said, totally understand. I deal with me all the time. It's pretty bad, trust me. <laughs> but um, I think that'll be kind of a fun thing as well to be able to have that. And it's nice to be able to, if you miss the live stream, to be able to catch up if you still were interested but not able to come for whatever reason. little stripes. In hindsight, I probably wouldn't put down the yellow like I did. I feel like I'm having to fight that a little bit, which that's my fault. So we will be wrapping up the stream pretty soon. I want to keep it to a respectable amount of time so that, we're, so that we are respectful of your time because I appreciate everybody who's coming in to watch and be a part of the stream. So it's a fun thing for me to do. And if there's nobody here, that's fine. But it's always more fun when there's people around chatting and hanging out and stuff. So yeah, I think we're pretty well set on this white. I'll probably go in and just do a tiny little bit of white on these areas. Because this area of the back that we're seeing here, not only is it going to be in the light from the sun up top, but it's also going to be through this sort of transparent fin material. So we want that to be pretty kind of uh, hazy, I guess, and indistinct. What I'll do is I'll just touch this up with a little bit of white so that we dial back on these values a little bit. So I don't really want it to be super duper yellow, but a little bit of yellow is fine. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting when you've got more colors that are kind of peeking through in different spots. I want to add a little bit of the darker red color in this little area back here. And back here. And maybe a little bit right there as well. 
So that area is going to be pretty well in shadow. And I'm just going in with a little bit of water and moving that paint that I just put down around a little bit so that we get a little bit of a gradation through there. Add a little bit down here as well. And I think I'm pretty pleased with that. I've got uh, a couple little bubbles in the background here that I'll paint just like this with some thin white paint. Need that to be a little bit whiter as we go up so that you can actually see them a little bit more distinctly. That looks pretty good. And then to polish things off, I'll go in with ink and clean up some of those lines. I'm going to move my palette off to the side here so that that doesn't uh, get in the way. Where can I put this? There we go. Perfect. And again, left-handed makes things tough, but that's all right. So this is a fountain pen that I received for Christmas as a gift. And I'm using platinum carbon ink inside of that. Which I, uh, I really like. This is an extra fine nib on this um, fountain pen. I don't know if that matters to anybody. <laughs> But I gotta say, I've really enjoyed, I take notes with this pen. It's fun for that. I like drawing with it. It's good for that as well. So these ink lines will just kind of help to solidify the drawing in some spots. Here, go around here, get some of the seaweed marked off. And I think we will be closing down the stream pretty soon. So if anybody has any last minute questions or things that they want to chat about or uh, discussions as to whether or not uh, Kirk is better than Picard or vice versa, you can throw those in the chat. And if you have any suggestions for the stream too, things you'd like to see me make on the stream, um, any sort of subject matter like that, um, if there's things that you'd like to see me not do on the stream, you can tell me that as well. And feel free to just leave a comment or a like if you'd like as well. All of that helps out and is uh, fun to see. We'll do that, give a little bit of detail in the background here. All this should be pretty indistinct because we're getting kind of far back. And there's a lot of water in between us and the what we're seeing back there. Oh, thank you. Somebody says, nice job. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, painting animals is kind of a different beast from what I'm normally doing. Mostly it's all comic book art or landscapes for the most part. And if you'd watched the previous live stream, you'll notice that 
Knock on wood, it doesn't look like we lost connection any time this time. I learned from my mistakes and I used a hardline Ethernet cable. Apparently that cured the problem. So good news moving forward. I guess we're going to be <laughs> having better connections from here on out. I may have to wait a little bit before I ink this, because I don't know if you can see that, but I've got a little glob of uh, paint that came off on the nib of the pen, which is uh, no bueno. It's not what you want. This area should be dry, though, so I'll go ahead and do some of that. Yeah, it looks like I'm getting a little bit too much paint on there at this point. That's okay, though. So with that, I think we'll probably close things down. Uh, really, all that's left on this one is just to ink a little bit more of this, make everything a little bit more distinct, and then uh, sign it and call it good, I think. So again, I appreciate you guys joining me here for this stream. Um, I hope you had fun. I hope it was interesting. Uh, I hope that I didn't ramble on too much for you. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll call it for tonight. I'll be posting this um, at some point on social media. I'm in the middle of posting a couple of Trek noir. So it's Star Trek characters in a kind of comic booky film noir style. So I've got, I think, two more of those that will be going out. I've got Data and Captain Picard from The Next Generation that still need to go out. And then I'll probably be posting this out there. But yeah. Appreciate you joining me. The time-lapse video, we'll see how it goes, see if that goes up. Um, this will be going up on social media, the finished painting at some point. So hope you enjoy. Thanks for joining me. And uh, have a great night. Have a great weekend. Thanks.